Hey there again everyone, it is SpooferJock here again with another video for Vadim M. Without further ado, let's get on to the meat of this topic. I can assume you're all familiar with the Come Fly With Me cheat which makes your tank fly around like a plane. What you may not know is that the developer is actually considered adding another similar cheat. This cheat would enable helicopter physics for your car. That's right, the car would fly like the helicopter. Unfortunately, the cheat code was never completely finished in the end. The only way to enable it now is to use hex editing and trigger it in the game memory because there is no cheat code combination available for it. If you somehow enable the cheat, nothing will change apart from one tiny thing. The reverse gear becomes broken, but at the same time, it enables visible rotor blades. As long as you press the reverse gear, it will enable broken helicopter physics. Despite the fact that they are broken, it was fun messing around with them. I could kill pedestrians with the rotor blades, sneaking behind them and enabling them. If I hit an obstacle by driving back, the car would spin around and lose all control. Sometimes it would even bounce off a wall. These physics are kind of interesting to experiment with. By driving off the building, it perfectly lands on the ground and precisely on four wheels. The main problem here is that all these cars won't ever go up into the skies. They will all eventually hit the ground anyways. Interesting thing is, all cars behave differently. The best result I got was by using this bus, which actually flew above the ground, glitching all the way around. Damn, I had so much fun with that, just, just look at this. If I say so myself, it would be an interesting cheat to mess around with if it ever was completed. Special thanks to Silent, Nick007, and Firehead for helping me find and show how to activate this cheat. By looking through the game files, you can find this interesting pickup featuring headphones. Its external name is Pickup Music, suggesting that it was somehow involved with the music. By using a little bit of magic, we can make it spawn. Unfortunately, the story behind this pickup is a complete mystery as there is no code, or at least anything which would suggest how this pickup was going to work. Try to guess what it could do by expressing your opinion in the comment section below. According to the interior files, Ken Rosenberg's office was going to be located south of the underground mall near Collar and Cuffs, but it can't be seen without even touching the game files. During cutscenes inside the office, the scenery outside does not match with any scenery around Hotel Harrison, where it was supposed to be. I'm just curious, did you manage to spot this goof or not? If the developers didn't move his office a little bit further, then it would be too close to our first hideout, which was probably the reason to make that change. This won't be much of a surprise, but this game has a lot of unused in-game props, which are not used in-game, but they are defined in it. To show you these props, I made two polygons on the beach and on the parking lot. Some of these props will be discussed today, while the rest will be left for part two. Let's start with the beach stuff, because what else can we start off with when the warm and tropical atmosphere of Vice City is involved? The first unused object is this strange pink house, which has an identical name with this yellow lifeguard tower without having a letter B in the model name. Who knows, maybe in the early days of development, it was randomly located around the beach just like the lifeguard tower. The second prop is this cool looking volleyball net, which would definitely be a cool addition to the beach atmosphere. The problem is, it has no collision, meaning you can go through it at any time you want. Such a shame that it wasn't finished nor used in the game. I bet you'll love the next two models as they are sandcastles. <laughs> oh boy, but in all seriousness, the developers removed two sandcastle props. But wait, there is something interesting about them. If you drive fast enough, you can actually destroy at least one of them. Isn't that cool? Sadly, the second model doesn't have any collision. Why not include them in the game? The next thing is this classic wooden lounger, which you will probably find familiar. If you play Grand Theft Auto 3, then you could spot its model during this cutscene, which takes place in Asuka's condo. According to this early screenshot, this model was actually seen at Starfish Island, and during the development, it was replaced with two different loungers. And speaking of them, there are actually three of them available in the game files. The third one with the towel remains, sadly, unused. You probably wonder why the developers replaced those wooden loungers. Was there a reason not to add the missing collision to its original model? Who knows, maybe they considered making new models instead of improving the old cutscene one. 
Some of you may already know that Inside Track was going to appear in Vice City, but was postponed until the time that San Andreas was being developed. In the final version of the game, you can still locate its exterior in Vice Point here, near the local Pay and Spray Garage, but you can't get into it as there is no interior or any functionality behind the door. What you didn't know is the fact that the PS2 game files have two unused texture containers, which are missing everywhere else for this specific place. By looking at them, we can say for sure that the cut inside track interior in Vice City was basically reused in San Andreas. Just look at the textures, they are the same. The developers didn't even change the Vice City name on this one, although it was never used in San Andreas apart from a rubbish bin. And hey, have you noticed that they changed the VTB abbreviation to OTB? Heck, this change was also featured in Vice City Stories, but the interior was still missing there. But anyways, I strongly believe that the interior was cut from Vice City and with some minor changes appeared in the San Andreas universe. I'm not sure about betting on horses as there is no evidence or anything suggesting this, but this could be another place for Tommy to steal some extra cash. According to the Brady Games official strategy guide, the old livery for the Top Fun van was heavily inspired by the Top Gun video game available on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Were they afraid that the old logo would cause them troubles? Seems logical. Fun fact is, they totally forgot to change the old logo in the official game manual, where it seems to be the same as in those Brady Games screenshots. Thanks to this oversight, we can make it reappear in the final game by modding the game. And speaking of legal troubles, I guess you are familiar with the Ocean View Hotel, as it is our first hideout in the game lore. Originally, it was supposed to be named Clevelander, as this screenshot would suggest. It seems the name was based on a real hotel at South Beach, Florida, with a little bit of its exterior. It is a real mystery why the developers wanted to stick with the real name, and after that decided to make up their own name. Here is an unused model of a bus shelter, which was seen at least two times, for instance, in these two screenshots. Judging from them, these shelters could be placed in many places around the city, but for some reason, the developers decided to get rid of them. There are two problems with this prop. First of all, its texture is too damn compressed that you can barely see what's on this poster. Secondly, you can't ram into this shelter, meaning that you can't have fun destroying this prop with the vehicles in the game. On the bright side, this model was brought back in San Andreas with fully revamped textures. What is most important is that they were made destroyable. The next object is this road separator, which has three palms in the middle. Once again, we are lucky because this prop was seen in this screenshot here. As a result, this road separator was located in Washington Beach, near the fountain in the middle of the road somewhere here. But as you can see, this area was changed quite a lot, and that's why this object became unused. Here, we have six different packs of drugs, and the sad thing is, we know absolutely nothing about them. Were they used in missions? We don't know. More of these props will be reviewed in the future part. I want to say a special thanks to Dimzet for finding these unused models. During the story, the player will be able to buy various properties all over the city like Sunshine Autos. According to the game lore, before Tommy decides to buy it, it was going to have a name of BJ Smith's used autos, as the official manual on some billboards over the city would suggest. Heck, there is even a funny commercial on the KChat radio featuring BJ promoting this place. Hi, I'm BJ Smith, fighting in for the Vice City Mamas and proud proprietor of BJ's used autos. I noticed there was one thing missing from this great town, a celebrity endorsed used car shop. That's why I founded BJ's Used Autos. The official website confirms that BJ Smith owns just one car lot, aka Sunshine Autos, with an assumption that he might sell stolen cars. Well, I'm very sad to be selling the dealership to y'all. This is my first investment after I turned pro. Sadly, the developers never implemented this feature to the final game, and his property always has the same name no matter what. What is more sad, this idea wasn't even brought back in Vice City Stories, which is set two years before the main event. A thought occurred to me, what if BJ's Use Autos used to be its beta name? Might be, however you can find both names in the official manual. I give up on this one. According to a few facts, Pastor Richards was supposed to have a larger role in the game lore, having more than just a brief appearance on Cortez's yacht. Was he introduced in that party like everyone else whom you will encounter during the main story? Kinda. And the other two are Pastor Richards 
and pseudo-intellectual film director Steve Scott. A passion with the Nipple Invaders when the giant... According to some pre-release material, we can dig out more about this nasty person. Why did I say nasty? Let's find out. Almost two months before the game was even released, GameSpot made their small preview of the game, saying that Pastor Richards was one of the other major characters, describing him as a corrupt preacher. So, the small preview indirectly confirms that he was going to give us at least some missions. The next tidbit was left in the Game Master magazine, where it is stated that, Pastor Richards was a fire and brimstone preacher who was raising money to build a statue of himself for the people of Vice City and a Hawaiian mansion for himself. His threat to society has yet to be pinpointed, but he's currently bribing NASA staff to gain rocket technology, hates people who help others, and communists. Well, Rockstar sure wanted to make a good, stereotypical, corrupted preacher. Let's not forget that he has official artwork, and the developers also shared his concept art with the community, meaning he was in development for a long time. Despite these facts, he never appeared nor gave us his crazy missions after the party which make those previews describing Richards completely pointless, or at least after the game was released. Many people believe that this character was cut because his voice actor, David Green, passed away during the production of the game. Honestly, this is a complete mystery, because according to the Internet Movie Database, this specific actor was featured in Law & Order in 2004, and after two years in another film. How could this possibly be? Is it another myth that everyone believes in? Honestly, I don't know. If you had a sharp eye, you could spot a misplaced pedestrian during the Messing with the Man cutscene right here. By fixing his coordinates, we can bring him back into the scene, so let's compare his appearance to the final cutscene. Rossetti, Cougar says you can handle a bike pretty good. Yeah, how many more errands? As you can see, there was a purpose to hide him under the interior, because judging from his animations, it should be a female waitress, but for some reason, Rockstar used a completely different skin for that. In the Hogtide mission, this dude appears again, but very briefly with the same girly animations. His model name in both cutscenes is M Server, which is a copy of another model by the name of M Goon A. It really feels like they didn't have time to make or implement a female server, and hit this dummy character in the first cutscene as fast as possible by changing his Z coordinate, but very poorly. By the way, the bartender in that cutscene also appears to have some unique animations, but due to the final camera angle, he was left behind. While we are here, I want to give a huge thanks to Mr. Jago for fixing those animations. Have you ever thought about the security guards working for the Patrol Invest Group, or simply Pig? I bet you have. So, did you know that the developers plan to use two different Pig models throughout the game? You see, the game uses two Pig models, but they are the same, having no difference whatsoever. If we were to paint their textures, we can see both of them on the streets having different colors. What a shame, this could have added some variety to the game, as the mission scripts use both models too. Just look at this. Wouldn't it be great to see some variety here? Dang it all, Rockstar. Some of you may already know that there was a cut character by the name of Mr. Moffat, whom Tommy would help to escape. If you don't know who he was, pause the video and read this unused text found in the game files. The sad thing is, people always refer to this model saying that it was taken from the game files, adding that it is Mr. Moffat. The truth is, this model came from a mod made by AAAs ages ago, which was never released. Sadly, the original model of Mr. Moffat was never left in the game files. Maybe it wasn't even made, but who knows. That's all for today's episode. If you want to see more content like this, please click the subscribe button below. This has been Spooferjog voicing for Vadim M again, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.